This is the preamble. We're not. This won't be in the show. No, We're it will keep... be in there. It will. It will. <laughs> this week on the House of Static, from Paris, France, singer, songwriter, producer, and multi-genre indie pioneer, Lisa Leland. Okay. Well, let's say. Uh, well, let's say this. As, as Kilo said, hello. This is the House of Static. I am. Uh, I'm Bob Smith. The Static part. Kilo House. The House part. And uh, Kilo and I are musicians. And we like talking to other musicians about music and art and whatever it is they may be doing or thinking or, or and, uh, and whatnot. And uh, today we have Lisa Leland. And if you'll tell me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, Lisa, I, I, I just know it from writing it. So uh, Lisa is, um, is a French musician who has, we'll get to deep into her catalog and, and history in a little bit. Uh, Lisa's done a lot of music uh, all around the world, really, not just in France. And uh, it's pretty great stuff. Kilo and I were, were listening together actually earlier and I'm familiar oh, with yeah. Lisa's. And, and uh, if some of you may know that I have a music blog, I'm familiar with Lisa's music from that. And uh, that's, you know, that's how we met. I am now a big fan of her music. I there love you the new album, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so Lisa, say hello. Well, hello, bonjour. We're in France here. It's nine thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, sounds right. good. Yeah. Sounds much easier. So I'm a, yeah, I'm a Spanish French artist. I used to live in the United States. Lucky me. And here I am to talk with you guys about music and and life, right? Indeed, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, the the most recent project that Lisa has done that uh, brought her to you know to uh, to my blog and now into, into this conversation is uh, Lisa's most recent album, Glass of Blood, which is a really really very cool Fantastic. album. Yeah, it's a really neat, really great album. And uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to to be uh you know in, in communication with with lisa and her label a little bit over the last year and i've gotten to listen to some of the stuff a little early and everything and it's been a lot of fun and it's just a great record so uh yeah yeah so lisa our plan is to you know get into that and talk about the new record and everything but maybe first uh you know a little a little about you about yeah. your history and where you, you where know, did it start what inspired you to start making music like when did you start and what made you right. go i want to i want to make music and bang on things and sing and, and whatever well like a lot of people i come from a music background there was always music playing at my house with um, my parents and my brothers but always live music the big parties every week at my parents house where my dad and his friends were all playing guitar playing the piano singing I'm talking maybe 40 people playing oh, music wow. together until uh, three in the morning um, in our living room. Then uh, my brothers started a band when they were around nine years old <laughs> and uh, starting playing shows and recording. And I was just listening to music as our main um, leisure activity at home. And uh, one day, there's always this one day I mean, there's two things. I started taking piano lessons, really liked the composer Bartok. Bartok, if you oh, know. Oh, Bartok, him. yes. All right. Yeah. I really wanted to play his music. Then I went and my parents went and got me a piano teacher. And I asked her, Oh, I really like this composer's music. Could I play it? And then I had to learn. <laughs> and it wasn't as fun as I planned it to be. So I start, I just wanted to bang on the piano. So in order for me to do that, I had to write my own music. So that's my first that's, cool. um, that's my first door to composing is I want to play piano, but I don't want to learn. So I might as well. <laughs> that's oh. amazing. Yeah. I, uh... Yeah, I, my my story is almost the same, except it was Bob Dylan instead of Bartok. So there you go. <laughs> that was when I was really a little kid, and then I went to a few shows. One of them, it's not very original. I'm sorry, but being Bjork, uh, Bjork. Oh, Bjork is oh, Bjork, uh, I love Bjork. <laughs> I went to one of her shows, and for the first time, I felt like I didn't want to be in the public. I wanted to be on stage, and I wanted to do mm -hmm. that. And I wanted my vocal cords to to feel the way it seemed like hers were feeling, you know. 
the the way she was singing it felt like really her all being was being expressed and i went home and it started the really the whole thing started with me wanting to be more than just uh, in the audience i really wanted yeah. to write that's amazing that's very cool yeah bjork's voice comes from another planet i think it, it's a very unique you know it's a, it's deep from from her soul i think it's oh, very for personal sure, dude. Yeah. and i think that being scandinavian it uh, struck a chord with me mm-hmm. which um ended up being really one of the most important uh, points of my writing is I the, the first years of my music I wrote only when I was in nature in Sweden. That's where I was inspired. It was a direct message from <laughs> the forest <laughs> to my writing. And I think maybe that's why it's this artist, because she wasn't the one I was listening to the most. I was listening to girls group, I was listening to hip hop music a lot, uh, to techno music, but the writing came from this same feminine, in nature side of me. I think that's cool. very cool. <laughs> that's very cool. So, so you, uh, said, you said you lived in, you also have lived in the United States. So I assume you've worked with artists all over the world. Can you kind of run through that with us? Yeah. Actually, uh, my brothers organized a music festival in Paris um, a long time ago when I was in uh, high school. And that's where they introduced me to a lot of uh, American artists, such as uh, Jeffrey Lewis, Kimia Dawson, uh, John Darnell from the Mountain Ghosts, uh, Jason Molina. Um, I met a whole lot of, of artists, John Darnell, I have uh, uh, helped me in my in my making music in the states later because thanks to him I pro- I recorded an album in California with part of his team which was great oh, and yeah. I even uh, that's where I met a lot of people and then I fled to to New York for holidays and just never co- came back for a few days <laughs> a few years and uh, was performing there a lot and recording recording recording. That's excellent. That's awesome. Uh, you know, Lisa, in my, you know, in that that time there, uh, you were mentioning a lot of the, you know, the indie and anti folk artists that you worked with, and uh, in my notes anyway, I have that you uh, you worked with Daniel Johnston, and is that true? Because that's that's cool. Well, I never mention it myself because that's not what I consider working with. Actually, we were. Uh, we were at the same residency slash festival mm-hmm. and he was walking in the, in a corridor and he came to me and said, I like your voice, little girl. Would you like to sing with me? <laughs> oh, well, that's excellent. I'm very bad that's at impressions. Awesome. Yeah, no, that was pretty good. I think actually. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I ended singing a bit of a song with him and other artists. We nice. recorded together a, a song with a lot of the artists that were there um each each one wrote a, a little a few a couple of verses of the song and then we recorded all together that's that's great yeah, that, that most experience. yeah most people watching probably have no idea what we're talking about but <clears throat> daniel excuse me oh no yeah i'm dying um, <clears throat> we're all dying me. slowly don't worry all right i'll i'll edit that out Anyway, no. so <laughs> no, he won't. Some things He's out. Lying to you. <laughs> anyway, the point being is that uh, Daniel Johnston is uh, like a real indie legend, uh, you know, to a handful of nerdy kids like me who, in the '80s, was making my own little DIY, you know, demo tapes and such, and sending them out to the world. And uh, Daniel Johnston is sort of the king of that. Like he, he, you right. know. He, he was kind of made more famous in the 90s when uh, Kurt Cobain wore one of his T-shirts. But, you know, but he was <laughs> cool before that. That's awesome. So uh, anyway, me, I digress. <laughs> let me let me ask you, do you still have to go into the forest to write music or do you what's the difference between how you write music now and how you wrote music back then when you said you went into the forest and then it spoke through you or however you put it? Do you still do that or? Well, the forest has grown into me, if I can say. There's enough shadow okay. and nature and uh, poetry inside my heart that I can write within myself, mm-hmm. uh, which when you're a young kid, maybe you haven't experienced the mysteries, the, 
the nighttime, the romance, your heart is not yet filled with that. Right. Now I have enough, I have enough inside stories to write, even if I'd rather write in the forest. And but what has changed a lot since the time I lived in the US and toward um, South America and Europe and everything is sedentarity. I used to write because I had a show that night and I wanted to tell my week's stories and I wanted to have new material. So a lot like I imagine a comedian does before doing a stand-up right. yeah. comedy. Right. When I had a show, I was writing three or four new songs that day just in order to perform them that night. That's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. And now, now it's more... It's more abstract. I can stay st locked in the same room for a week and still have. Um, it's it's less of a storytelling process and more of a poetry and imagery work that I do now. Well, how do you how do you stay inspired with the whole sedentary lifestyle compared to? Because if you're out in the world traveling, doing stuff, you have a million things. Because what our fans might not know, you know, as artists like. Whatever we're inputting, which I've said this on the show many times, what we input is what we output. So she's saying she went from having a very insane lifestyle. We know what it feels like to tour and do that kind of stuff. So I understand that completely. How do you find inspiration in a locked room, you know, so to speak? I guess always feeling um, like I don't belong. The okay. less you belong, the less you're a bit uncomfortable. And that's a place of creation, too. I really don't belong in a sedentary lifestyle. Um, oh, yeah. I have a good relationship with my kid. But when I drive him to school in the morning and have just to say hello to the other moms and stuff, I, I always feel socially awkward. Mm -hmm. And this place of in social insecurity is kind of a of a travel in itself. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah, that that you internalize it. So they basically the journey goes. There's inside. a lot of movement in being in a life that's so different right. to what you're used to. And it's, it's inspiration enough for now, I guess, Sometimes I do think. when we're locked in. Yeah, no, you're right, though. I do think and I think Bob will agree on being uncomfortable. Sometimes is a good inspiration in itself. It's a good creational tool. If you can embrace that, you sure, have to be yeah. willing to go, well, fuck this. This sucks. But I mean, Bob can say from knowing my life, I've done that with my music a lot. So I think mm -hmm. that your answer is spot on. Being uncomfortable is sometimes a great place to find inspiration. Yeah, I agree. I hope so anyway, because I'm basically always uncomfortable. So, <laughs> so. Well, welcome to the club. That's exactly. why your music Socially is so awkward. badass, bro. <laughs> and we're not telling anybody out there to go like sell your house. To become an artist, like <laughs> let's just be homeless so that I can make it. Like all those people that made it from the bottom, don't do that. Don't have to be uncomfortable, but yeah. you find yourself in that situation, you can still be creative. Yeah. Roll with it, right? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know, it, uh, it's cool. So one thing I was thinking about when you were um, you were talking about how your life has changed, and then you know, and how um, you can find that sort of natural uh, inspiration internally now, instead of uh, going out and walking out into the woods and things. Um, is what thing I was thinking about is your music over the. You can hear a, a significant change in the style of music you've done over the years, right? right? You can, you know, mm -hmm. you're you had you know you're you were doing some sort of a, you know kind of India alternative electro pop for a while, and you mm -hmm. did like and you did more like dream pop California sound stuff, you know, and and and. It, that and it is very cool and very different than what you're doing now. So it would, now, you know, your music today is very earthy, very, very natural sounding. It's very, you know, it sounds like a live band playing in a room. Yeah, it's great. And it, yeah, it's really a beautiful sound, a beautiful natural sound. The record and and I, you know, that kind of um, I don't know. I guess that 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 channeling of that sort of natural uh, inspiration from yourself, from internally. I guess maybe led to that i guess I, tell us a little bit about that how does that become this really beautiful warm album that you've made actually the the sounds of my uh, previous albums was always determined by where i was geographically and the means i had usually i arrived in a city i had six hours to two days to record a whole album 
whoever, whatever musician was willing to participate with me, we would get in a room and do what we had time and means to do in that little bubble of time. And so that's what determined the musical color of my album. If I was in uh, Brazil, for instance, I arrived in Brazil, I needed a band. I got up on the on the counter on the zinc at a bar and was like, is there a drummer in the room? Is there a <laughs> bass player in the room? <laughs> Two dudes came up, we recorded the next day. And that was the, that that's was amazing. The, that that's was the, awesome. And it was the same in New York. When I was in California, I recorded with my roommate, who was also my surf nanny, and in his... Oh, uh, what now? What is that? My, my surf nanny, mm-hmm. like, he would take me to surf spots in the oh. morning and and give me tips, and we were like, let's do a record. So it oh. sounded like a surf record, because that's what we were doing together. So it was always <laughs> like a chameleon style, because that's the guitars we had, that's the amps we had, that's what we were doing. And the last one, I actually had time and means because I had a great record label that was like, what do you want to do? And I felt like, well, I want to explore my own sounds and my own references. And I just want to write something that sounds like the music I've always had in my head. Mm -hmm. And we took time. Every single part of melody was... um, was searched, researched and written. And we had a lot of time in the studio. The musicians lived in Paris. I lived in Paris and we weren't limited by time or um, our instruments. And that's why this record sounds different, but it's still, I guess it's the only time I had time to do it my way the whole way. Right. Right. It, yeah. it sounds, right. I mean, it, it just has such a, it's such a personal sound. It really, you know what I mean? It really oh. does. I, I mean, it, you, you I feel, did, yeah. You feel like you're hanging out with you it's and great. the band listening to the music. It really just is a really beautiful, warm sound. I was listening to it today. And I, you know, as you know, as I mentioned, I've listened to it previously, but you know, obviously we're coming to the interview today. So I was like, I could go back to that album. And uh, and I texted Kilo immediately, like, dude, you know, just start the Take album from the beginning. Out, motherfucker. And we were both yeah. like hanging out, listening to it at the same time. Like, this is, you know, really whoever the stuff. producer was did an amazing <laughs> job of doing something I try to do, which we talked about this earlier. Mm-hmm. I, I'm the producer for Bob, so I do his records, I right. mix and master his stuff and do all that shit. Um, mm-hmm. And one thing I really appreciated about the organic nature and feel of the album was how each song felt cohesive, right? It didn't feel like you just recorded a bunch of songs randomly and said, I'm going to put this out as an album, which people do do that. But it sounded very big budget, like professional studio, like, like for instance, the reverb that they use, they use on most of the songs, in my opinion. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's a different reverb. Maybe I'm wrong. Whoever the producer is, comment in the video and tell me <laughs> I'm wrong. Go. But I really enjoyed how <laughs> much... <laughs> At I least it's the producer. Oh, really? <laughs> there you Are you go. kidding me right now? Nice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> I, I love your work. You're very. Well, am I wrong great. though? Am I wrong? No. Is that a different reverb, or is it mainly the same reverb on each song? You're not wrong, actually. I'm the co-producer. It's um, it's a duo. It's me and my friend Guillaume Leglise. How French does this name sound? That is wonderful. Guillaume, French French name. Guillaume. yes. Which means Guillaume Church, which is funny. <laughs> and uh, so we were, uh, we worked together. We did everything, the recordings, the mixing, uh, he's, the producing. He's your guitar player as well, right? Also my guitar player. Oh. We're like, he's my hands. Mm-hmm. He's my translator in a, when there's a limit to my, um, uh, to my computer abilities. He's right. very limited with that. We worked with a lot of, it's funny that you say it sounds like it was recorded in a professional studio because a lot of the songs were even recorded uh, in my bed. I mean, on my bed, sorry. I was nine months pregnant and I couldn't even get out of the house. And I I just had a mic and there was a guy coming, playing the violin in my bedroom and recording with little mics. And I have this vocal microphone that I love and that I use all the time. And 
I'm pretty old school with the reverbs. It's true. I always use. Sounds great. Uh, I love using either Space Echo or I have one or two tools that I liked. My um, drum right. machine is an 808 I bought when I was 16 years old, and it's nice. always the same one. That's amazing. And the an, sound, a, an actual real like professional. I'm floored, but at least it's honestly my and our so, sound from no, start to finish because. Coming from someone who literally gets paid to mix and master <laughs> and make an album sound like an album, which we're working on an album right now. Right. Um, I loved it because I heard one song. I just clicked on the first song. And what I expect usually as someone who's listened to music for years and is a good producer is I thought the next song on the album would sound so different that I'd be like, oh, I really liked that one. Why don't <laughs> yeah. we give me more of that? But literally, I could listen to every song and be like, I love this as much as I love the last one. Right. Which does it not happen usually at the like level of DIY, right? right. Don't you agree, Bob? You have to have a team, you know, yeah, even well, you have had to have a team. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's a, yeah, it's a beautifully cohesive sound. And it's not to so say, great. That, right. And it's not to say that the, the songs are the same because they're not actually. No, it's very, right. it's a very diverse and creative and, you know, there's an the, the, we were talking about the what's the the acapella song? I forget oh, I love it! I love the poem yeah. song. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. We were talking. About, I was, so I was good. saying, I was telling Kilo when we were listening to it that I wanted to sample it and make a <laughs> make it do like a remix with yeah. it or something. But um, actually, my voice into my um, into my how do you call that? My uh, cell phone, cell phone oh, uh, yeah, recorder phone. because yeah. it was in the middle of the night and I dreamed this text. And I had not to forget it. And I woke up and I was like, oh, I think something happened last night. And that's how it came out. And that's how it oh, was. That's on the beautiful. <laughs> it's funny that she talked about recording in her bed because I was talking to my friend earlier today about like recording techniques, like vocal techniques and stuff like that. I was talking about how at the schooling that I took, they taught us like, you need to know how to record in any situation in any room because they said, you might be on tour and end up playing a show with like Juicy J or like Adele or somebody, some big artist. And they're like, I want to collab. And you need to be able to do it in the fucking hotel room, which I've never done it in a hotel room. I've done it in a living room, in a kitchen, in a bathroom. You know, I've done vocals lots of places. But it's funny you say that because I was talking about that earlier and saying there's a lot of albums out there that you don't even know were recorded like in a hotel room behind two mattresses. Like that yeah. definitely happens all the time. Yeah. And you're living proof that a whole album can be done while you're fucking pregnant. So there's no excuse <laughs> watching the show. What's your excuse now? She can do it pregnant. I can't do it pregnant. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. So back to me not being amazed that you're the producer <laughs> and now I'm shy. That's okay. Um, so we like, or I like to talk about, because I'm always curious about inspiration, right? So one thing I've talked about on this show a lot, and I will continue to, whether you guys watching it like it or not, is <laughs> inspiration from internal and external sources. And the comparison of, do you get more inspired by like internal emotions and feelings or external events, circumstances such as Drug use, not that we're a fan of lots of drugs, but some drugs are fine. Alcohol use, which that's alcohol, whatever. Um, or is it more like, you know, oh man, I just got broken up with, or I just saw my son do his first, you know, yoga pose, or like, I don't know what kids do these days. I'm, I'm it's a yoga, about. I think. Sure, <laughs> why not? Which one, you know, or is it a mixture of the both? It's really a mixture of. Can I answer point by point? All the way. Answer any Anything way you, like. you want. <laughs> Drugs and booze. I think the reason why I'm not a total addict and I'm not an addict at all, actually, is because it takes me away from my creative right. ability. Totally. Like it makes me, even when I had an accident, for instance, and I had to take medication, I didn't take it because I felt like I'd, I couldn't write if I was mm -hmm. taking anything that would take me away from my regular weirdness. And um, external, 
is when I write, when I'm in a community and when I write a lot and I'm on the road, I feel like I want to tell these little stories. For instance, something funny happens on the plane or on the street and I want to communicate it in my words to the audience. But that's a different kind of songs that the those songs are written very fast and it's for me to communicate usually a very sad story that I want to that I want to turn into something a bit fun or ridiculous. Right. And in, but mostly my deepest songs come from my feelings, my interrogation, my feeling on the side of things and listening to records. Mm-hmm. You listen to a record, for instance, I'm going to listen to a, a Black Sabbath record and look at the sleeve and and then I'm going to feel like, oh, my God, this music is so good. Why can't I make music so good? And it's a place right. of frustration almost. I don't know. Right. Like right. I wish I were that band. And <laughs> <laughs> right. And you write your own thing because, I don't know, beauty calls for beauty, I guess. Right. Well, you know, yeah. And, you know, a lot of that is is, is like what uh, Keila was saying before, how, you know, what, you know, what what you put in is what you put out, you know, whether it's your stories about traveling from city to city and, and recording, you know, your, your recordings being a product of that, those travels, or, you know, as, as you're describing now, just like, you know, how you're living and how that manifests into your art. I think it's, it's really interesting how, how these things are, that line between internal and external is actually pretty blurry, you know? And sure. You, sure. You, you, you slide between the it's two. It's technically a trick question because all your internal emotions are kind of dictated by some external force in some way. But don't tell the next guest that because. <laughs> it's That's awesome. Well, but the power of music you don't know how to do to me is always a very big part of my creative process. Oh yeah. I love metal, for instance. Me too. And I never, I never ever find a good um, metal band I could play with. I've tried. It never mixed the right way. So from this frustration, listening to great records and still not having access to how do they do it so good. Right. It keeps me writing songs that you would never guess had that for a starting point. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I, I, People yeah. talk about that all the time. Mm-hmm. For instance, like, um, I write dark ass shit that's like horror themed <laughs> trap music, yeah, but I'm a very happy person and I'm a very enthusiastic person about life. And and so you would never think that this person is the person writing those songs, you know, that seems so dark. And I was in a deathcore band, so I mean, I did. I always have done kind of dirty, angry, lack of a better word, let's get murdered music. <laughs> and yeah. yet, it comes from a very peaceful place in my heart. And it's funny that yeah. you said that because metal bands are the same way. I've toured with metal bands. I played. I'm a drummer. I was a drummer in a metal band, no longer. But um, and it does. It's weird because we are the happiest bunch of people. We're super nice. Never met a metal band that I didn't get along with. <laughs> and yet we write this music that's like about crazy shit. And so, Man. yeah, you're right. It's just sometimes it doesn't even match up at all. <laughs> Have you ever met a happy comedian? I haven't. No, that's a this good is point. True. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good this point. Is very, I've always told people that I've always, because I'm, uh, you can't tell now, but our audience knows I'm in a wheelchair and I've always said I want to do stand up comedy, but I cannot stand. So I'll not do that. But I've always told people like there's never a joke that's like the punchline is. And then we got home safely. You know, like <laughs> there's no fucking joke where the ending is a good ending. No like, that, yeah. And then we crashed our car into an ambulance would be the joke. Like, you don't ever tell a story of the night you went out drinking and then you got a taxi and you went home and you went to sleep and your husband was there and you were so happy. No one's going to go to that show. So you're right. Yeah. It, it, it is always usually the the opposite type of thing. Yeah. I don't know. That's awesome. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, um, Lisa, in, in um, when you were talking about your writing and, you know, the 
I got your style of writing, your actual, like your actual poetic style, you know, the, the way you actually piece the words together is, is something that really caught my ear really early on when I first heard music. It still does. And um, your, your song, Muscle Memory of, of uh, Missing You, is yeah. what that's, that one just that just keeps spinning in my head. That song, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, it makes makes me think of my father, honestly. But it's 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 um, but it, these lyrically, it's it's non-specific, right? I mean, even the, even the title and the, the concept of it is this sort of like this 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 sort of like almost your a mental thing and a physical thing, and it's just this this innate like pain and, and 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 longing for someone that you love or i mean that's what i get from it anyway that's yeah. the, the muscle memory is this you know you, this is just this emotion that is completely uh out of your control but it's yeah. there and it's just it uh, you know it's part of you right all right so but you don't say that you say it in just this nice kind of poetic flowing muscle memory a little bit of alliteration and it's and it but it just it you know you, you the the miss the you know the meaning can't be missed on it. It's it's wonderful. So I you know I, I guess like what I'm getting at is that you know so you, a lot of your writing kind of reminds me um, that 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 aspect of it reminds me of some of my favorite writers, guys you know like Lou Reed and 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 Dylan and and Bowie. You know where they're not they're not being very specific in their writing, but they're telling you a whole lot in a short little phrase of catchy words. You know so. Am I right about your influences? I guess is what I'm getting at. Because I'm so right that's... about my influences, and I'm blushing like crazy. <laughs> um, to me, I guess I discovered writing politeness and awarefulness of, awarefulness of others through these writers. It's like we have a common feeling, but I won't impose you my personal story impose to you my personal story i will try and find words that anyone can relate to because that's it's very the cool. global of the thing that's interesting like you're not here to watch me make do my laundry yeah. and it's these words that become more important than the feeling itself that inspired right. them right that even cure the feeling itself because then the words and the phenomenon become more important than the pain that led to them. Right. It's kind of a magic formula, I guess. Right, yeah. yeah. You repeat I it think, and it I feels think, better because the process becomes more interesting than the person or that the, than the event that provoked it. Yeah. Well, sure. if I'm being clear, but it's... No, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, no, I and, definitely yeah, get it. Writers are definitely my... Uh, my inspiration. I think the power of words where something can be ugly, but if you put the right words in the right order, it can become a little island of poetry. Mm -hmm. It's just... Right. We were talking about that <clears throat> earlier today, too, about the song... That's so funny you said that. About the song called Colors by... Um, what are they called? Group Love. Group Love, Group Love right. So that song is very beautiful and pretty and fun to sing. And it is about Kurt Cobain killing himself. I think if I'm wrong, message in the comments, everybody, but I'm not wrong. Um, <laughs> but what's super dope about that is like that song to me, when I hear it come on, when I'm playing a video game, I'm driving my car, I get pumped up. I get fucking excited to sing this song about this dude killing himself. And that's exactly what you're talking about, where it's like, if I think of the words, it's not a pretty island of poetry. It's a fucking shit show of death. But yeah. when the music is playing the way they wrote it, you know, I am man, 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 up in, in the air, blah, blah, blah. You know the song, everybody. But mm -hmm. that just gets me so excited. And if they were just to blatantly say, and then he killed himself because drugs, then the <laughs> song would not be fun. No, yeah, that would not be fun at all. Lot. And I had no idea what it was about. I actually saw a YouTube video that was like, this is what it's actually about. And I was yeah. like, bam. So you're dead on with that. I think mm -hmm. the killers do that very well. I think group love to anybody that's a good artist can. I mean, there's so many examples. Outcast did it on like their most famous song. That song's yeah. like about his parents and stuff. It's not about like what you think it's about. So many people. You're so yeah. dead on with that. That's so right. 
Yeah, and, and um, uh, now I did a kilo. It's my turn. This yes, I just yes. Said okay, so every episode, <laughs> one of us, one of the three of us, will forget all the way what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> it was me for like the first six episodes, <laughs> and I did it more than once. There you Getting go. A little bit better uh, because he's taking over. But we'll be thinking. We'll be like listening to the other person so intently that yeah. suddenly what we were about to say I'll think of something in mind, go... right when we're about to say it. So right. there anyway, we go. That's but I remember now. I yes. remember. So <laughs> so anyway, what I was gonna say basically is what you were getting at, like when you were talking with when Lisa was talking about the you know the the meaning the, the keeping the words not specific so they don't you know they can take on their own meaning to the listener and, and right. you were talking about colors. It's that that notion that art ceases to belong to the artist once it's created. You know what I mean? Like it's, Absolutely. it's kind of, it's ours up until the point that it's done. Right. And Is it really it, ever ours though? Right, well, Hey, there you go. That's Let's it. just think about that for a second. Yeah. But if you think of it, or even if it's like, you know, like you're like, you're a chef and you're making a meal, you know, once you hand right. it over, okay, yeah. you know, there right. you go. enjoy the meal and, and it becomes right. Right. Becomes, right. So it'd be, you know, cause I remember I had, I, when I was in college one time, I went in college one time. I was in this writing class in college and um, there was this poem. It was, I don't remember who wrote it. It was called the skunking hour. And, and we were supposed to, it was one of these dumb exercises where you read it and then you, you, everybody writes what oh. they think it's about. And then you, yeah. Have to, you know, and then, so then the professor's like, all right, Smith, what do you think? And I, I don't remember. I said, Oh, I think it means this, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, wrong. And I was like, and I was like what do you mean wrong? Like, I, it's what it means to me. And he's like, well, that's not what the writer meant. I'm like, how do you know? You know, he didn't like this conversation. Right. It didn't go well for him. Right. But, right. <laughs> but, but no, that, that's so funny. They made you do that because at my schooling, we had an assignment where we had to go home and listen to Hotel California, like over and over again. And then our grade was how close we could get to the right answer of what it was about, which right, right. obviously they did end up giving us all a good grade and saying, it means whatever it wants to to you. Mm -hmm. But point being, I thought it was like about drug addiction and like maybe sex addiction, stuff like that. And it's about the music industry in California in the time it was written. That's all the yeah, fuck yeah. it's about. Those yeah, things are brain, not, none of that's mutually exclusive. By zero, the way. Right, my brain went <laughs> so dark with it about this completely other thing that it did not get written about yet. I can find that meaning in it still to this day, knowing the real meaning of it. So we both had to do that shitty exercise, but I still right got on. a good grade. So. <laughs> there you go. Good job. So but what you just said to me just brings me back to this little sentence you slid in, which was, um, do the words really belong to us? No. Because that's the subject that really interests me. It's kind of the concept of God spell. You know, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm just a vector. Yeah, the words that come from I don't know where right. uh, travel. You, you need to read the the book. Sorry, I cut you off. The book, um, the War of Art, not the Art of War, but the War of Art, because that's about. <laughs> not to be mistaken. Right. Do not mistake that, everybody. But that's exactly what she's talking about. She should read it. It's exactly what you're talking about, where it talks about how we are literally the thing that these ideas come to and expect us to spit them out the other end and they come to us. And it's like this one guy talks, I think in that book about like, he's like a country musician and he's driving his truck on the highway one day. And he like came up with this entire song and, and he says what song it is. And it's a hit song. And he says like, it came to me and I was on the highway and I literally pulled over and like yelled at the universe. Like, you really want me to do this right now here on the side of the highway? But you're right. It's like, in my opinion, at least, when I was first becoming a producer, and I think I talked about this last last episode, but um, I was having a hard time writing one time, and I didn't know anything about making EDM or anything. And I was having a hard time, so I called my dad like in the middle of the night. I was out in the in the garage smoking cigarettes in like twenty degree weather, being frustrated. And my dad said, "Do not write the song for your sake." Do not write the song for the audience's sake. Write the song for the song's sake. And yeah. write exactly what the song wants to be and needs to be, and then fuck off. It's not you. It's not yours anymore. And, and, and I think it's amazing that you're talking about this because to be a healthy artist 
Anyone listening to this right now that's struggling with this kind of stuff, don't worry. We all have. It just takes you having a layer of letting go for you to come. I Some of my best songs I wrote in like a day, maybe a few hours. And right. that's because I was in that place she's talking about where it's like, I'm no longer writing the song. The song's just happening and I'm watching it happen. And I'm like, this is cool. You know, that's amazing. Yeah. People search their whole life to find what you're talking about right now. Right. Well, it's like, it's Lisa. It's like the song you said you, uh, you woke up and, and recorded in your phone. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the same idea. It's a, it's a, it's an involuntary action almost. You just, you know, wake up, record it. That's how John, that's how John Lennon wrote across the universe, by the way. In a dream. That's amazing. He woke up from a dream and. Well, what happened was so wild. I'm sorry, it's the yeah. mystical minute, but I just, I have that song in my head right now. And it's ah. been keeping me from talking to you because the words, I've been having it stuck in my head for the past two hours. That's crazy. And it, Which, over and over again. And now I hear you say that and I'm like, am I awake? Am I dead? Is it really are you happening? Are you, talking about, are you talking about across the universe? Yeah. Wow, it's, that's crazy. That's awesome. It's so weird. Wait, you want another? Yeah. You want another little weird bit of uh, of uh, synchronicity here? Uh, yeah. You've you've got Paul Simon behind you, and I'm yeah. wearing I'm wearing Paul Simon's lyrics on my shirt. <laughs> Even crazier, everybody! I literally talked to my friend about synchronicity an hour ago. There literally an hour ago, I was walking <laughs> my dog on the phone, talking about you know when things are just. What is that word? And I had to think of the exact word that you just said. We did not script this, everybody, by the way. There you go. In our other episodes, it doesn't. We're not a magic show, even though it seems like it right now. No, we hope That's you've so we hope weird. you're in we hope you're enjoying the first episode of the Carl Young Book Club. And we're all talking yeah. about yes. Carl we'll Young. We'll be doing our magic <laughs> tricks shortly. Yeah, right. That's amazing. Yeah. But no, yeah, synchronicity is also a crazy thing that really helps me write i'll be like thinking of a song and a sound that i heard and i'm thinking it's awesome and then i open like ableton and put like massive on the channel and just flip to a random sound it's that sound i'm like shit now i have to write a song now there's no options you know i don't know it's part of my inspirational process i think that's excellent well lisa now no how do we top that how do we top all these random occurrences that just happened to us? What, what? Why don't we talk about <laughs> glass of blood? Why don't we talk about what take oh us God. through how you how you worked on that album? I want to know about the reverb, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, <laughs> no, how did you come up with the title? Why these songs that you put into the album, and so on? So, so the title of the album is something really, really, really organic and natural. It's it started. Uh, like 15 years back, every time I was hitting a hard time, um, maybe falling in the street or falling in life, I would he I started hearing in my head, yes, I could use a glass of blood. It was like, oh, that's cool. The very phrase that came to the feeling of I was in need of something to bring me back to life. I'm vegan. I don't know if you know that, but it's pretty oh, ironic. Man. Bob is vegan. I am. Yeah. I'll eat all the meat for you guys, oh. so, you don't eat it so I can have it all. Don't worry. But I started writing it and writing it again and again, and even I even had um, an exhibition in Paris where I was just all I did was drawing postcards with written "Yes, I could use a glass of blood" on it. That's cool. And I felt like this was a song waiting to happen, but I wouldn't force it. So. It started 15 years ago and the song came out last year. I never wrote it before. I was like, one day this will be a song, but I, I'm just going to wait for it to happen. That's awesome. And well, the con actually I'm very, uh, the imagery of blood and moonlight and shadows and um, ghost pirate boats, all of that is what, what lives in my mind. So That's great. It wasn't we are we are kindred spirits. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. We are. And we're not weird. Don't worry, guys. We're cool. <laughs> so what made you choose those songs to put on the like, you know, because as an artist myself, like when I make an album, which Bob has been quoted as saying one time to me, or more than once, I write albums like other people write singles. I'll write a full album out of nowhere and he'll be like, Why the fuck did you now have a new album? <laughs> you know, it's but, true. 
what well, I know as an artist that when you do that, you eventually have to go through a cutting period where you're like, I do not want this in this album. Or also I'll hear a song from four years ago and be like, I want this on this album. I've done that. So what, what compiled this whole album together? Or did you write it all at once, maybe? Well, actually, this one is a pretty special one because I didn't play music, sing record music or listen to any single song for a huge period of time, for maybe five years. Um, Something happened in my physical life that made me unable to do any kind of music. So Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to listen to any kind of music because it was too painful I was just making myself some um, hours of recordings of white noise with uh, machines, with uh, my uh, uh, vacuum cleaner or uh, the rain or, and I would listen to that on repeat all night long, but I wouldn't want to listen to one song. It was too painful because I thought I knew that never again would I be on a stage or would I perform. And then one day, um, a song happened. I was still in the same. <laughs> Sorry, that was, I was a good still way of putting it. The same physical predicament, but my guitar that was full of dust on the side of my living room was there. I didn't even dare look at, at it. But the right. song Janet. Oh, that's yeah. the one I like. That's, that's the, the one I like the most. Oh yeah. yeah well, it nice. flew. I had to grab my guitar, and it took me the exact length of the of the song to write it. It just kept flowing through my hands and, and voice. And when I heard my voice, it was like, you know, these videos of puppies that bark for the first time and they don't even yeah. know what happens. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Yeah. That's great. And then I was like, dare I hope that one day I will write, record and edit a song that will be listened by maybe three strangers. That was my only prayer. And that was my only goal throughout this record. So I was like, if I do one last record or one last song, it has to be uh, like the portrait of Dorian Gray version of myself. Right. It has to look exactly like me. It has to be my my testament record. You don't know me. You want to know me? Listen to that record. That's me made in record. And well, the record happened, and there's old songs that are old songs that I had written before and that I thought would never see the light of day. And there's new songs that happened after that accident that that just proved me that yes, you could be a different physical being, but still right. write songs. And so it's pretty. It's like a first record, a last record, the beginning of a cycle, the end of a cycle. I don't know. It's a lot of things put into one record. It's, wow. it's crazy you you told that story because that's another thing that makes us kindred spirits because I, I don't know. It was three years ago, I think now. I'm not sure. It was a while back. I got necrotizing pneumonia and my body was septic and I had a blood sugar of like 500 or more. And my temperature was 92. And I woke up a few days later in the ICU, right? And I almost died. They had to remove part of my lung. They, I didn't think I'd ever move again, the amount that I do move. And so I did the same thing. I did not touch my fucking computer for two years or more. I was like, I won't touch it. I'm not going to do shit. I'm not going to write anything until I am not in a place like this anymore. So. I had to detox off of painkillers because I don't like them and I didn't want to be on them. But obviously, if you have part of your lung removed, you have to be on strong painkillers. And it's a big mess. It took me over a year to get off of them. And then I had to get off other drugs. Anyways, I did not want to be in that state of mind when I wrote music. I did not want to write music that would remind me of that pain almost. If, for lack of a better way to explain to everybody, and so that's true. I, I admire that you respected your craft enough to say, I'm going through this right now and I fuck music. I'm not going to do it no matter what. And I mean, that's where my brand really started, like where I went from being just like a mediocre or EDM artist to writing music that like someday people will be copying what I'm doing now. 
and it, and it took me going away. And I even had like a friend come live with me in California that I used to live in the house in Oklahoma with um, because he was helping me like get off the, the methadone and stuff because I was like, fuck this, I don't want to be on it. And he was like, let's work on music because he's like an amazing musician that can like play the drums. There's a video on YouTube of him playing a song on the keyboard and playing the drums at the same time. And I was just like, <laughs> this guy's my, it blows my mind, but he really wanted to work on music and just have fun. And I did not, I wanted to sit in my misery, remember my misery and not participate in that music thing, you know? So, I mean, that's cool that you did the same thing. Some people do right in those times. I'm not saying it's wrong, mm -hmm. by the way, anybody out there, anything we'd say, you don't have to do what we did. If you find yourself in the same situation as we did, just know we became successful through it. But right. you don't have, once again, you don't have to give yourself pneumonia to be a successful <laughs> artist. You know, you don't have to have a health problem. No. But it's cool to hear another person with so many similar stories to my own, which I obviously, everyone kind of thinks I'm a unique Pokemon, you know, like mm -hmm. my friend who's dead um, used to say to me that I was a unique Pokemon. We're not fucking unique Pokemon. Did you? Did I think that I would meet a French artist today that has a lot of similar stories to me and how they ended up with their awesome sound? No, but they're out there. You're not a unique Pokemon. Sorry if your parents told you you were kids. Well, you're not. <laughs> you know, you know, you're, you're alluding to yet another Paul Simon lyric, oddly enough. Am know, I? I? Well, I am a rock. I am an island. That's the whole idea. He's, he's, right. You know, man, man exactly. that claims to be a man, uh, an island unto himself, but really, he is not. No one is. We're, right, all, that's we're so, all in this. But theater. I mean, yeah, that's so funny that you say that because it's just like, and that's, and you're right because I, I live in chronic pain a lot of the time, and my dad. My dad and me love listening to music. We'll listen to fucking anything and make fun of it if it sucks. Enjoy it if it's good. You know, and he'll be, he'll come over to my house for dinner or whatever. I'll be in pain and he'll be like, let's listen to music. And I'll be like, fuck music. I literally like my physical being is like no to music. Bob doesn't know this story, but like now everybody does. You know, sometimes there are moments where you just do, you, even though that's your passion, that's your career, that's, you know, what drives you through life, you're like, I can't do it right now. And I admire that you had the where for all, like, if I'm using that word, that I'm saying wrong correctly. Close where, enough. Where, wherewithal. Where with whatever, that <laughs> word, where you're close, whatever. Um, you know, that you had that, that word to say, I'm not going to write music right now. And you thought maybe you'd never write music again, which I also felt the same way. But I think the amazingness of the new album that I just think is great um, came probably from that exact choice of if it, if it happens, it happens. It's probably never going to happen. And then it did. And look, you're being interviewed on our podcast, you know. <laughs> there you, you go. Know. Well, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, and you're and right. And today, two, you said you want three random strangers. Yeah. I don't have a third. I'm sorry. <laughs> But well, no, too, my parent, no, my parents, both of them listened to it. There with you go. Me There's four random strangers. Dinner. So you got four <laughs> today alone, random strangers that thought your music was amazing. So dream big, <laughs> come true, kid. There you go. Just dream big. <clears throat> well, come true. <laughs> and I, I, I think that's an excellent point. And um, the, uh, you know, but you mentioned random strangers made me think, Hilo, that, you know, we're closing on the hour and we have to make sure we get in our random questions. Sure. But first, but first. we want, but first, like we've done in every other episode, after we say, please like and subscribe to all our yes. shit, because we have to say that. No, no, really, we do want you to so you don't miss out on, on the cool people that we've interviewed in the past and the cool people we're interviewing now. And remember to leave in the comments artists that you might want us to talk about. Also, since we're getting to the random question part of the show, leave a comment saying like a random question you might want to hear the next artist answer, and we will decide if you are smart or not. Good. Now, on to what I was going to say. At this point in the show, we'd like to say, is there anything else you would like to say? Anything at all, you can talk about rain or anything you want. This is the part of the show where the artist 
that we're interviewing get to talk about whatever the fuck they want. Who cares? Well, I'm not going to be very original, but I'm going to ask you guys, because I wonder as there's so many similarities. So that's not my random question. It's just. Okay. You know, okay. Question, You're just going to interview they, us for a moment. Yeah, you, sure. If you see this record behind me, which is a soundtrack for a movie called, let me show you. Whoops. <laughs> Daughters of Darkness okay. by French artist Francois de Roubaix. Okay. I never heard of that. Well, man, you, you I was wondering if people in the US music aficionados were listening to it. He's my he's my dream guy in music. He, right. he made mostly um movie scores. Mm. Almost only movie scores. And uh, children movies, adult movies. This one is a is a horror movie. And That's his awesome. music and his uh, composing process is my ideal. That's he's awesome. De Roubaix. He died at a young age, um, mm. diving in the sea. I mean, how do you call that? Scuba diving? Scuba diving. Yeah, scuba diving. Fun. He was uh, in the 70s, and you should uh, you should check him out. That's what okay. I wanted to talk about. I was on the record what? this morning when I woke up, what and I was wondering if... It was uh, popular on the other side of the ocean. What, Bob, have you heard of him? I have not. No, I have not, but I'm going to definitely look it up now. Absolutely. But no, I love but composers. Lo Someday I will be a composer, I promise. My manager works in movies and stuff, and he's like, oh, he's in my new music video that's coming out mm -hmm. um, this month. But um, no, yeah, I love, I love trying to make imagery with my music and i think it'd be dope to be able to do what he got to do and what a lot of people do which is have an image in front of you and then write the music and try to capture that into music that's dope yeah I it's love dope. Shit like that love it that was a great thing to say at the that's end cool. by the way because we <laughs> never have people actually give a shit what's happening where we're <laughs> at no i'm not saying i'm just saying usually it's like Follow me on Instagram. No, I don't oh, think we've yeah. right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't think we've had that happen. I'm just joking. I promise. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> so we, I don't know. Maybe. Anyways, um, anyway. now we have come to everyone's favorite part of the show. Okay, maybe not everyone, but my favorite part of the show. Right. Where it's we all about uh, it, we right in, 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 <laughs> yes. Um where one of us of your hosts today will ask a industry related random question and one of us will ask a absolutely insane stupid random question like what is your favorite color sock to wear and why this question has not been used yet but i will probably use it someday so without further ado i think bob is going to start us off today with the oh and she gets to ask a question yes and we all have to answer including our own questions so right. if you're going to ask something crazy you got to remember, you got to answer it. That's why the game is played. This so <laughs> exactly. go right ahead, Bob. Okay. So, uh, we, Akil and I, you and I talked about, I think, I think this is the one I said I was going to ask. So the, um, we the, well, indi the industry one, right, right. Well, when we were, um, listening to your uh to your album earlier lisa one thing are that, you giving away our work process sir no i'm just kidding. <laughs> no we were listening one thing that that kilo brought up and i agreed with it and, and i i would like to know the answer to as well is how I, how did the the song titles come about on your record because you if anyone were to look at the credits on the record you'd see that the song titles themselves are like little mini stories right. you know they're they're very they're they're literative you know so, for, so the, for the audience he's asking each of us to answer how do you come up with the titles of well, that's song? right we all have to answer this question so right. it's not specifically not just, just your i'm just making sure they know that we're not baiting her into answering something <laughs> that we're not going to answer right. Right but now. anyway i made it your your song interesting made question. Of that. No. interesting question they're actually the to me the very condensed version of the song okay it's what I, it could be the start, it could be the start of the song. It's the idea resumed, the resumed idea of the song. Mm -hmm. And it also gives a more precise color to the album. The, the artwork, the 
title of the album, the, the topic, the videos all give you a window to my, uh, to my personal imagery. Right. And I like it when every single uh, component of the record gives right. you a more precise idea of the color of the record. Yep. It ha everything is supposed to strengthen the, the rest. I like a precise concept, which uh, it's weird because it's very full of my selfie because the concept was myself. <laughs> Yeah, so but that, but it, but it. words to know what I like and what I'm like. Right on. Yeah. Well, cool. Excellent answer. I, once again, she kind of answered it for me because we are apparently the same human being. <laughs> so I agree with her completely. More than you know. More than you, you know. Go. There you go. Exactly. We are one mind. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. So yeah, no, I agree with her and I do the same thing. I think that the name of my songs are kind of the concept behind the song. And in some instances, it's a little different. I Sometimes I use like quotes from the song, right? Because I put a lot of movie samples in my songs as my fans that are listening know. Um, sometimes, you know, for instance, like I did a song recently, my last release was a song called Halloween that came out for Halloween, and it had Halloween movie sound bites in. So obviously that song's going to be called Halloween. My next, one of my next singles that's going to come out is called um, Ghost Face because it's based on like the Scream movie. Right but on. also to what she was saying about kind of what is insider coloring the album, because of me having synesthesia where I kind of see things when I hear music, that also helps with the names. For instance, like my song Hits that's on my album, Ruthless. The song Hits is kind of about when I went through a very rough and destructive breakup, right? And so I decided to go to my uncle's house and drink away some of my tears sometime that night. And then I went home and I heard a Rocky quote. I, I think it's from... I think it may be actually from the movie that Sylvester Stallone did with the other fighter, and he's not the fighter, called, uh, what is that? Oh, uh, oh yeah, um, uh, it's Creed. Creed. Yeah, right, Get so I heard, I heard... I'm something. sorry I have to interrupt you because of the synchronicity, but do you know the name of my son? No, you don't. He's called Jacob Balboa. That's oh amazing. That's <laughs> awesome. Synchronicity. <laughs> That's, I had that's, to. I'm that's sorry, the name of this episode now is awesome. not episode whatever number. It's episode <laughs> synchronicity because yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but so the name of the song has nothing to do with being from that movie, even though it does because it's right. hit. But it's like that song was me telling myself to get over it. Right. <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to cry. That's why I wear sunglasses. Don't worry, guys. You've heard me say that before. Um, no, but it, it came from like me taking a few blows in life that I did not expect I was going to get. So yeah, you're right. I mean, my song Sacrifice, the song was written by Tay Hero, who's going to be on our podcast soon. Um, and it was, um, kind of about my life, which is funny story. We're in the studio. I know I'm taking up all our time. <laughs> We're in the studio and he's writing all these lyrics and he's, kind of going over and he's recording and I start tearing up because I'm a big baby and I think I'm just a big baby. And so I'm like, you know, bro, this song is great. It's made me tear up. And he's like, bro, this song is about your life. And I was like, well, yeah, fuck. Awesome. so the song sacrifice name sacrifice because of all the sacrifices I went through. So yeah, I am answering it with her exactly the same way. Good job. Well, what about okay. you, Bob? What about me? Well, um, uh, it depends because uh, one or two people know I make a couple of different. I sometimes I make instrumental music, and sometimes I sing. And so when I'm making my, I make a lot of instrumental music. And when I do that, as uh, well, actually in both cases, I, I sort of uh, start from improvisation and build outwardly. So I come up with a riff, I come up with a word, a, a phrase, and just kind of play with it and beat beat around until it becomes a song. So. Right. So the thing actually kind of uh, just kind of grows naturally. So by the time I've, I'm at the, you know, I've got a title, 
I probably have had four titles that have just kind of morphed into oh, that Oh, me one, too. I'm know? not going to lie about that. Yeah. That definitely happens all the time. Yeah, but, but then they're directed, but especially like the instrumentals become a sound of something, usually somewhere physical that I've been, you know, like a right. beach or things like that. So anyway, that's that's. Oh, awesome. yeah, like that one song, Low Tide Funk. Well, that's the one. Yes, on there right you go. Low, low Tide Funk is a great right example. Now. Yes, yeah. there you go. So, Kilo, okay, um, my, my turn to you. Ask yeah, you have to ask a question. My name. I answered the question. No, you have to ask a question. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Um, I want to know by all of the above panel, um, if you had to describe your outward aesthetic, meaning the way you dress, the way you look, your, your style with a song title, what would the song title be and why is that your answer? That's good. It's a two. It's a pretty wild question, man. Right on. Dude, I don't know. Well, no, yes, I do know. Yes, you because do. Because the world gave it to me right here. One trick pony. <laughs> that's is a very good one. That definitely is the correct answer. Oh my I gosh, that's that's, that's fantastic. That's a great answer. answer. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and I, I, why, yeah. why? But you have to answer the why part of the question no, as well. So There's two parts to my why. If you know a bit of my art and myself, I'm obsessed with horses and ponies. I use them in my songs, in my art, in my in life. All I want to do is uh, I'm the girl who's uh, in the car is always, uh, oh, horses, can I pet them? And, I, and you have to you have to park on the side of the road and I have to, to right. go pet the horse. And also because I sometimes I don't know if it happens to you, but I feel like if you're on a date or if you're meeting someone for the first time and you're starting telling your same life stories and people are like, oh, you're amazing. And I'm like, yeah, but what's going to happen once you get past the few life stories that are amazing and there's just right. me remaining. There you go. Uh, after a while you feel like, oh no, here I am telling this story again. And <laughs> it's right. amazing. But then what happens next? Right. Next. Exactly. Yes. Dude, I love, I love where she took that question, Bob. So yeah. let's take it the way she took it because me and Bob always say when people say what do you mean by that with the questions mm -hmm. we say whatever you think it means so yeah, my yeah. question was super fucking shallow like a dumbass <laughs> it was just about like what you wear and how you dress but she gave us such a better like answer of you yeah. as a human being that I would love to have you answer it that way as well oh gosh wow um I know she just opened this shit up yeah, well, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, there are ways, there are, like, song titles that I wish I was as a human being, you know, just some, maybe something cool, like Lowrider or something like that. <laughs> you know oh, yeah, I mean? mine is not cool. Don't worry. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, uh, I'll go, I'll say, you know, I'll stick with the low theme. I'll say that, uh, because just because you mentioned it, and it's one of my songs that, it's a song of mine that Kilo is remixing and mastering right yeah. now. And it's called low. It's an instrumental, and it's called low tide. Low tide funk. Low tide funk. So I'll say that's my vibe. You're uh, gonna use your own was, song. I'm that's use a my G own song. Fucking. That's a G go. fucking move right there, bro. Right oh, Holy God. shit! You just <laughs> plugged your own song, and you answered the question at the same and time. And I made and I made myself sound pretty cool because low tide that's funk about. sounds pretty yeah. cool. No, right? That is, <laughs> the, but if you know, if any of you know. Um, the static dive, you know, that is not an exaggeration, it's no, not him exactly. trying to be cool. So, when I when I originally came up with this question, I was like, shit, I'm a dumbass because I don't even know my own answer to it. Right? So, after two seconds of looking in the mirror because I had such a shallow question, I decided <laughs> it would be the song Paint It Black, but I'm not using that as my answer because obviously I wear black all the time. It ended up black, and I'm not going to wear it. It just doesn't feel right on my skin. I guess the the, the coloring bothers my my vampire skin, whatever. Yeah, but, you know, the song Painted Black has got a lot of uh, kind of deeper psychological meaning but to see, it. The, that the question fit. had nothing to do with anything deep, you guys. It was like the name of the song related to how you look, which I'm now going to answer what our question has evolved into with one last synchronicity for today's episode it may never happen again. Uh, we were talking about it earlier, and I'm not sure why. Um, is that song Hello Darkness, My Old Friend, or what's that song called? 
It's the sounds of silence. It's it's the shark okay, I'm well, wearing. That right doesn't now. work because it's a lyric from the fucking song. Shit. <laughs> then I, I don't. Oh, I know. I know. All the way fucking no. The answer to the wonderfulness that the question has become. No more synchronicity, but it's a great answer. It's the song Energy by Drake, right? Because I am a bundle of energy that sometimes people cannot handle. And I know this about myself. I'm the dude that can stay up the rest of the night playing a video game, and I'll talk to you the same energy level in the morning. I consume a million energy drinks a day. I drink (laughs) pre-workout for fun. My drug of choice is caffeine all the way. Never turn away from it. So energy by Drake. That is my, that is for sure. All right. Cool, man. So before we go, you guys, you need to um, check out her album. Well, what? Wait, what does, doesn't Lisa get to ask a question? Oh, oh shit! Yeah, I forgot. Yes. Good job, Bob. We forgot on Joel's episode, but we're back. Okay. My question is not going to be very romantic, but was mine romantic? Well, I made it romantic. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. You did. You did. It was supposed to be shallow, but you got I, me. I dare you to make this one romantic. It's oh, I'll do what it. What is your favorite tool? Because I love tools. You know, like. Actual tools you use to build right, right. things and break things, and I'm well, always in the on the lookout for a great tool I wouldn't know about, maybe related oh, to music shit. or bicycles or. Oh, that's a great question. House construction, whatever. I do you love mean. that question. Go ahead, Bob, because I have to think of mine. I know what it is, but I don't know what it is. Okay, well, I mean, I, I'll, I mean, I'll just say really, very, a, a very sort of geeky and literal answer to your question without getting any kind of deep at all i'm i'm a dork i like tools a lot did nerdy little tools soldering irons and things but a great one that is a little odd is a, a dremel if you do any kind of work on like guitars for instance like i've yeah. got a couple mm-hmm. of guitars here where i've like yeah. you know had to put new pickups in and stuff like that a dremel is great you can just kind of bore it out and pop your stuff that's in there. awesome it's so cool. there you go that's my answer my answer is going to be completely stupid because it's it's the truth. Um, one funny thing about um, my family is we, we think everything is a hammer. So I would, I'm going to be deep now and encourage everyone that everything is a hammer. Literally, I don't think I, I own a nice toolbox. You know, whenever I move into a new place, I upgrade my toolbox. I have new tools. I have battery starters for cars that are like handheld. I mean, I got everything. Don't got a fucking hammer because anything is a hammer when you need it to be. This microphone is a hammer. So my favorite <laughs> tool is using this microphone as a hammer. <laughs> well, there, or anything that you have in hand can smack a wall. It's a uh, hammer. Your uh, turn. Yeah, Lisa, you have to answer your own question now. Well, mine is so lame. I didn't know I would have to answer it, actually. Mine but... was, <laughs> is not a hammer. I don't I think it would be lying. Hammer. Well. Actually, I'm sorry because it's going to sound like I'm milking it, the, the, the synchronicity thing. But I have a hammer I use as a teddy bear, which is a real hammer. So, because it's my favorite object. And so I you have my object as a pet and mine does not exist in my apartment. It's perfect. And the, but the proof that I wasn't just milking it is I put out a song with a DJ Gilbert, who's a famous French artist. And um, when I talk about this hammer and the fact that I'm sleeping with it, and I always have it under my pillow just in case I would need to get into a fight in the middle of the night. That's, That's awesome. That is hilarious. Yeah. But I love expensive. hammers. I love hammering stuff. And I, I had another tool in mind, but then I was like, but that wouldn't be the honest answer because really I sleep with a hammer. So it makes it my So favorite. you love That's hammers wonderful. so much you sleep with it and I don't even own a hammer. So it's like <laughs> synchronicity to the level of no more thing. Like it literally <laughs> like flipped it. That's great. I'm glad That's I wonderful. answered it honestly. And I'm glad you answered it honestly because if either of us lied about our honest answer that had nothing to do with the question it would have just ended it i could have made up some cool tool that i haven't been like so awesome but truthfully mine was hammers exist everywhere that's so wonderful. that's awesome so before you guys click off of our video please um 
Go listen to her album, Glass of Blood. It's out everywhere, and it's wonderful. And Bob, your new song will probably be out by the time this comes out, right? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, by the time this is out, uh, Zen Seeds will have been out for a couple of weeks at least. Yeah, so go listen to Zen Seeds by The Static Dive and go watch on our channel. Yes, it will and, have... and I, I just want to say, Lisa Lisa Leland, uh, thank you very much, so much for oh, coming Oh, for on. sure. Is, I was going to been... say all that after the plug. Oh, but sorry, that's okay, sorry. No, no, you're going no, to... Don't worry, I'm not forgetting <laughs> to thank her for coming and telling me that she's the great producer behind that album. There you go. I, there you I'm go. glad to know that I have now, because I even told my friend that I was talking to on the phone that I talked to about Singer I was like, I want to talk to that producer because they did a wonderful job for her. Because I just, like every other stupid person out there, I thought that it was like a huge, big budget album that yep. because of the way it sounds, how perfect it sounds. So great. Yeah. Sorry. I cut you off. So, no, no, that's okay. I, gonna, I, cut, I cut you the off. The last first. thing I was going to say is go watch my video, Travelers. It's on our channel, yes. whatever. doesn't matter. Thank you for being here. Thank you for putting up with your life difficulties and still coming back and being an artist because that album probably would not have been the same if you were in a different state of mind. There you go. Well, merci for having me. And uh, just a last shout out to my actual producer because maybe right. even if we do everything together i'd be nothing without his brilliant mind and hands which is guillaume l'eglise this poetic name you should check him out he's oh good. for sure he did great very humble it was great all right all it right was guys. so much fun you having guys you that was really fun thank you for all the synchronicity and the hammer story now i know i'm not <laughs> the only weird person about hammer <laughs> right, there you go. So goodbye from New York, LA, and Paris. Adios, everybody. Bye, everybody. Hey, let's take a minute.